Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Team Fight Tactics. This is taken from a normal game, and we've got Grandmaster Borders on one of the players in this game, so some pretty good competition in this game. I think there were another Diamond player and a couple Platinum players in this game, so we're going to be watching another normal game here, and this is a game where I was able to put together just a really, really strong team composition featuring Mages and the Lagoon trait, a total steamroller of a team, co of a team composition. And it was such an awesome game that I just wanted to share it with folks. Now, this was played before the most recent patch. By the time this gets posted, I think that the next patch is going to be out. This game is going to feature Seraphine and Zyra pretty heavily, and they are both due to get nerfed very, very hard because both of those are very strong units or were strong units in this patch. The Mage trait also said to get nerfed, so this will probably be slightly outdated by the time it actually gets posted on YouTube, but uh, it was a fun game. And if it's outdated, by the time you see this, you can look back at the days of Seraphine and Zyra being some of the stronger units in the game. Okay, so this is an unusual game right from the start, because we get a setup where it's the all spatula starting carousel. I believe it's 1% odds to get this, and I believe it's one half of 1% odds to get the everyone has a tactician's crown as the opener. So this is quite rare. If you play the game a lot, you'll probably see it eventually. You see it, well, 1% of the time. But it's certainly not something that happens that often. So anytime, you, <clears throat> excuse me, anytime you see this, you generally want to be thinking, well, what team compositions are there that really benefit from having spatulas? And because I had the Nunu pop up here on the initial minion round, my initial thought was, you know what? I've got a Nunu here. Why don't I look to play into Mirage? That way I can use, uh, the Mirage for this game is Duelist Dexterity, which is, again, seen as being one of the best of the options. So if you look at what I'm picking up here, I'm like, all right, th so this makes sense. Let's, uh, we can use this uh, spatula to make either plus one Mirage to get eight Mirage, or we can use it for a plus one Cavalier, which is also going to be pretty strong. So I actually clear my bench of a whole bunch of these units. I was like, all right, I'm going to be playing into Mirage. I've already got the Nunu, so I've got early progress towards Nunu three star. Ezreal can probably hold Deja's items early on, and we'll just go from there. Uh, it's actually a two item start, by the way. It's a, not a three, three item start, two item start. But uh, it's a tier that pops out, and that's significant because look what I get here from my augment choices. One of them is Mage Crest, and I was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I already have the items here to make a Mage Crest because I have Spatula plus tier. And then my augment can give me another Mage Crest. I was like, that feels really good. I, I think that I should try to play in that direction. Now, I've already checked what the... I've already checked what the Namzi is for this game. Namzi is a, is an evoker, so no mage Namzi for this game, which would make this even easier. But I, I feel like I have to play into this, so I'm going to go ahead and make one mage cap. I'm going to put this on Seraphine, and then I've got this other leftover mage hat, and I'm going to have to try to put it on somebody, but I'm not exactly sure who that's going to be. I could put it on a frontliner, but I don't think that that's quite right. I could also try to put it on... I guess I could try to put it on Nunu, but I don't think that's quite right either. I think Nunu is going to come out of this comp. So I've just pivoted super duper hard here from like the very start of the game. I guess I'll put it on Nunu because he's going to be coming out of this comp so he can just stay for one round. So he's going to double bite people, but that's not really all that useful, honestly. <laughs> Him double biting people is honestly not especially great. So I need, I'm going to need a couple rounds to get my board set up, and so I'm expecting I'm going to lose some of these rounds early on, and that's because I was building my board with the intention of going into a Mirage team composition, and then, as you said, I pivoted very, very hard into mages. But So it's going to take me a few rounds to get this set up, since I didn't really have the minion rounds to set it up, but this should be very, very strong. Having double mage caps from the very start of the game should just be an absolutely awesome way to open things up. All right, I'm also going to hit two-star jack, so I was like, all right, well, that's better frontline than anything else I can play. I don't want to put the mage cap on Jax, though. I don't think that he is the best user of this. Ideally, I'd put this on Zyra, because the two unit, if you can only put mage cap on one unit, usually you want to put it on Zyra. She just synergizes so well together with Silas, who is the frontliner you want to play. So I can already see, I think my frontline is going to be Jax plus Silas. That's kind of the goal because they're both bruisers that'll give me pretty strong front line so then if i only have one mage cap i'd like to put the mage cap on a zyra but of course i'll have to find her first but uh, i don't just have one mage cap i actually have two mage caps in this game so i get to put a mage cap on somebody else as well i've gone ahead and put it on seraphine she does double cast if you put this on her so if you're watching her closely she will cast twice so that will double uh double shield the nearby units 
I don't know if it double adds the amount of damage that they do on their auto attacks. That I'm not so sure on, but she does double shield. And the other nice thing about that is she double casts to give you double Lagoon benefit as well, because it does look like it would make the most sense to play into Lagoon with this setup right here. I'm at two out of three Lagoon. I've got the Seraphine, and I've also got the Talia. Of course, with this being a game that's playing into mages, and oh, here we go. Here's Kaisa. So I was like, ah, ah, there we go. So what do we do? We're going to put Kaisa in. That's going to make Lagoon. And then now I've got another user for this mage hat, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be Kaisa in the back lines there. So I've got all these champions on my bench. I actually have more champions on the, my bench than I really should here. But we can sell some of these. We can get rid of the Skarner. Skarner's not going to get played. NASA's not going to get played either. And I think that I also pick up the Lee Sin here because it's not going to cost me anything. And I could potentially play Lee Sin to put Dragon Mancer bonus in play. After all, Kaisa is a Dragon Mancer. I made her into a mage as well, but she is in fact actually a Dragon Mancer. So I could play the Lee Sin in order to get Dragon Mancer in for her on level up. I'm going to have to think about it and figure out what the heck I want to play on level up. Anyway, since I'm not close to 10 gold, it doesn't hurt me to do this. Also, I apparently hit the AFK player away from keyboard player, so um, that's an easy free win there. But I think that I'm getting to the point where I can actually beat like real legitimate boards as well. So a slightly late Lagoon start. Obviously, I don't get much in the way of Lagoon stacks from beating someone who has no units on the board. Um, so a slightly late Lagoon stack, uh, start there. By the way, it's kind of a sad that that person's not here because they got a, they got a free spatula off the initial carousel because we all got spatulas. And then the, uh, augment that they ran into was Earth's Grab Bag. So they actually have a free Tactician's Crown for plus one team size. A little bit sad that they're not there, but oh well. Okay, so what do I need here? Well, what I really need desperately is tears. Uh, because I already got a tier out of the minion round. That was the only other item that I got. I used it to make the second mage cap. So I need tiers desperately for this team composition. So I will happily take this, even though it is on a one gold champion, and that's not great. My econ is actually pretty sad right now. I need tiers, and I'm less likely to get them out of minion rounds because I've already gotten a tier out of a minion round. But oh my god, this high roll. Look at this high roll. I hit Talia two star, and then I instantly find a Silas as well. So I was like, okay, well, I'm definitely going to play the Silas then. We'll put the tier onto Talia. And I don't think that I have room now to play the Lee Sin. I guess I could take out Jax, and that would put Dragon Mancer in play, but it's two-star Jax. Um, definitely think the Jax is better to play here over that. So, all right, I guess I'll pass on that for the time being. I'll sell, I'm going to go ahead and sell that, even though I would like to find some way to get this in. But the next unit in is going to be a mage to get to five mages. So it just does not seem as though I'm going to play that Lee Sin anytime soon. If I'm not going to play it anytime soon, better to sell it, put it back into the store. So yeah, I actually think my board's pretty strong right now for the middle of stage two. I've got uh, four mages in it, and I'll be able to spike on five mages on the next level up. It's a big increase to go from three mages to five mages. In this patch version, three mages was 80%, uh, cast at 80% of your ability power, and then five mages is cast at 110%, although I think they're nerfing that down to 105% in the next patch. So anyway, this round is going to be a loss. Again, I'm I'm getting there, and uh, I was going to, if I had won that round, I was going to look to sell some things in order to try to get up to uh, 10 gold. By the way, yeah, I'm not, not doing well here from an econ perspective. Lagoon trait, save me, bring me money. Um, but I did couldn't get to 10 gold, so I did not end up selling anything there. All right, well, the Lagoon Orbs do give me Vlad two stars, so that's nice. So it looks like Vlad's going to be the next unit in. And then that means I can probably sell these Lilias that are on the bench, but like selling them right now does not get me to 20 gold, so there's little point in selling them. Just hold them for right now until I hit an income break point. So again, I did lose that round, but I still feel like my board is, is fairly strong overall, and it's going to keep getting stronger on every level up too, because as I get to play more mages, they'll all be double casting more frequently, and they'll be double casting at stronger amounts as well. Well, so again, the potential is here, and I feel like my board is only going to get stronger as the game goes on. Also, if I can get one more tier so I can put a blue buff on Kaisa so she double casts uh, and then goes right back to 20 mana, that will also be really nice. Obviously, Kaisa right now is holding items for so One nice thing about those champions is they do have very similar itemization. Uh, they, uh, Kaisa's mana cost is 45, and Soam's is 40, and they're both... Uh, AP casters. They both deal magic damage. They use very similar items. And in fact, I'm just going to use Kaisa to hold all of Soam's items and then build around that. By the way, here's another Silas. There's the Zyra. It's like, okay. All right. So <laughs> as I said, Zyra is not the next unit in. Um, Zyra will go to the comp eventually. 
But so I will pick her up for right now. But uh, Vlad has to be the next unit in so I can get five mages. As I said, it's a big boost to get up to five mages. And then Zyra probably goes in at level seven. So it's a little bit early to be picking her up, but she is an important unit. Long term, I'm going to keep the mage hat on Seraphine, I think, because it's good to have, like, she's just a good user of it. And she's probably not coming out of this comp forever, unless something really weird happens in terms of augments. Long term, though, the mage hat will come off of Kaisa, because Kaisa's going to get sold eventually. I'm not going to need her in the long term, uh, because Soam is already a mage. Soam is mage dragon. Soam has mage as his innate trait. So when I find Soam, I will be able to... Um, Wait, what was this? I was looking to sell the Jax. Uh, I was think oh, that's okay. I was thinking about selling the Jax and replacing him with Malphite, but then I was like, oh, we'll just hold Malphite for now. The reason why you typically don't see Jax in Lagoon boards is if you want to play six Lagoon, you typically need to get one extra Lagoon to get to six Lagoon. So, like, who are your Lagoon units normally? Well, Soam gives you three, and then you want to play Soam together with... Uh, Talia, because they're both mages, so that's four. You want to play Seraphine, that's five. And then you need one more. And then typically that one more is Malphite. So I've got to hold a Malphite because I'm probably going to need to replace the Jax with Malphite at some point to get to six Lagoon. But uh, the Jax is a way better frontline unit. Malphite's actually a pretty lousy frontline unit. He just has the bruiser trait, so he pairs with the... Uh, so he pairs with the Silas pretty well. But uh, Jax just bought me like a tremendous amount of time in this fight. I don't know if it's going to be enough for me to win this one. The, this person is running second wind and actually got a lot of second wind value in this fight. But uh, hey, it's making this fight closer. Come on, Kaisa, can you get off one more cast? Uh, all right, she, so I do lose this fight. But um, I did manage to kill another unit there and almost got the Nunu. Also, that person, I believe, has not lost a round yet. No, I have the chance to say, take Second Wind as well, but uh, that is not what I'm going to be taking. I am going to be taking Cybernetic Uplink. So this is a fantastic uh, uh, augment to have when you're playing a Mage's board. Any unit holding an item gains additional health and also gains a certain amount of mana regeneration per second. I believe it's three extra mana generation per second. Super duper nice when you're running a Mage setup because they're all about casting. The more they cast, the more damage they do. The more they cast, the more Lagoon stacks we get, etc., etc. By the way, the mage hats do count as an item, so keep that in mind as well. So, like, Seraphine has that mage hat that absolutely counts as an item for cybernetics value. So that's a pretty big deal. And later on, I'll be able to transfer that mage hat over to Zyra, and then that will give her an item for cybernetics value as well. I've also had the good luck to have an, a rod pop out from the last minion round. Now, I have not put that on anybody because... I really need another tier to make blue buff on Kaisa. Like, I could go ahead and make Archangel Staff, but then I'd need to get two more tiers, and that feels like it's a little bit unlikely that I can do that. So I'm just going to hold off there for right now. I actually get another Kaisa from a Lagoon Orb, but I don't need to make Kaisa 3-star. We'll be going into Soam later on. We don't need to make Kaisa 3-star. So, uh, and I also do have a Reforger, but I can probably save that for later on, because I'm pretty happy with all the items that I have thus far. I have now also hit 80 Lagoon stacks, so I'm going to get an item out of this Lagoon Orb. Um, I won't get to see what it is until the start of the next round, because it's a little buggy how that pops up. But uh, rest assured, you do get item components at 80 Lagoon stacks. By the way, there's another Zyra in the store. And oh look, it's a belt. That's really nice. Now I could make a... Could go ahead and make a Sunfire on my Silas, which would not be bad, but I'm going to make a Morellos instead. And that's because Soam is really, really good at applying Morellos. I know I've done some videos on Soam before, but his, generally speaking, his best items are blue buff because he spam casts with it, uh, blue buff plus Morellos, and then plus one more item. And the Morellos is really good because he applies Morellos to like the entire enemy board. It's just a very, very strong item to have on him. And Kaisa, not quite as good, but still not bad. She actually does apply Morellos reasonably well as well. So she's a pretty good holder of that item too. And so like right now she applied it to the Yone and the set on the other team. So uh, yeah, she's applying it to like two or three units at a time, which, you know, is not amazing, but it's not bad. It's quite good to get this on the Nunu so that Nunu's uh, healing is reduced um, when he bites people. I guess that person hasn't itemized any healing on Nunu yet, but uh, sooner or later they probably will. So yeah, I'm definitely feeling like my comp is getting stronger now. Going up to five mages was a big, 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 big boost. And now I'm hoping that I can get one more tier and I can make this blue buff, and then we'll be off and rolling. If I have to force it, I can always get it off Treasure Dragon eventually. All right, anyway, so the tier is actually coming right towards me. I am third pick here, 
but uh, one of the other players ended up taking it. So it's a little bit disappointing, but there are other good options here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this cloak. This is useful for two reasons. Number one, the main reason is it's going to make Gargoyle Stoneplate on Silas a great frontliner item, especially because I am lacking in frontline in this game. Uh, number two, it's on a Pantheon. It sells for four gold. And uh, my economy is still kind of, kind, of, kind of lousy here. So it's definitely useful to go ahead and get the four gold from selling. By the way, I've also made Zyra two-star, and Zyra two-star will spike my board really, really hard. But unfortunately, it's 32 gold to level. So I was like, ah, I don't think I can go all the way down to 12 gold. I think that that's pushing it a little bit too much. So I'm going to hold off here. I've been a little bit behind the curve economically in this game because early on in the game, I was holding all those units on my bench and it ended up costing me a fair bit of money. But uh, Lagoon has been helping me a lot. Lagoon's probably made me about 10 gold, roughly, so far in this game. So definitely is helping a good bit here. And wind streaking will also help me. So I'm really hoping that I can win this round and uh, be able to continue carrying kind of this little wind streak that I've got going. This is 100 Lagoon stacks, so this is the boot. When you hit 100 Lagoon stacks, you always get the boot. I'll repeat, I've said this in other videos, but I'll repeat it again. Lagoon is not random what you get. It's all predictated ahead of time, according to a table... That table is never displayed anywhere in game, so it's very reasonable for people to think that it's random, but uh, it's not. You always will get the boot at 100 stacks. You always get an item component at 80. The next item component is 140 stacks. So I'll be looking to see what I get at the 140 stack margin. And then you get an item remover at 220. You get a champion duplicator at 400. You get the uh, tactician's crown slash force of nature at 500 lagoon stacks. Very hard to get there. Usually the games don't last that long, but uh, yeah, it is it is something you can look to pick up if the game would last that long. All right, now I am on a three-match win streak, so I do, do choose to go ahead and level right now to seven to put in the Zyra, and that's because if I, I could potentially hit the person who hasn't lost a round yet and is on full win streak. So it's actually very, very important I win this round to try to carry this win streak through into the minion round. So it is worthwhile to go ahead, level here, drop down to 26 gold if it allows me to carry the minion streak. It, uh, excuse me, allows me to carry the win streak through to the minion stage. And you actually see kind of the benefits of it right there. Zyra gets off a really nice ult, locks up the whole front line of the enemy team, applies the Whisper debuff to them. Whispers, whenever Whispers units deal damage to a target, they reduce the armor and magic resistance of the target by 40%. So she is really good at shredding the uh, magic resistance, also the armor, but this team's entirely magic damage. So it's really just the MR. So she will shred the uh, magic resistance of whatever she hits. Also, Silas is doing the same thing as well, but Silas can't hit the back line, whereas Zyra can. And so that makes it easier for the rest of the carries to continue dealing damage. So we're looking pretty sharp here. I've managed to take that win streak out to four rounds. Again, I'm high rolling pretty good here. I effortlessly hit two-star uh, Kaisa to serve as my item holder. I hit the two-star Zyra very easily. I have two-star Vlad. I hit the two-star Jack super easily. I also hit two-star Talia. I have not hit the two-star um, Seraphine, but I did get her early. And oh, what's this? What is this? We actually just got another spatula here. And I was like, oh, okay. Do I want to make another mage hat? And I was sitting here thinking, I was like, actually, no. I think the play is not another mage hat because I don't think I can ever get up to nine mages. Also, remember, if I get another tier, I really want another tier to be uh, blue buff. So I kind of need my tiers for that. But I do have a glove here. Glove plus spatula is Lagoon, uh, does make Lagoon emblem. So I'm going to go ahead and make Silas into a Lagoon unit. And uh, just as if you get plus one mage in a Lagoon comp, you usually want to turn Zyra into a mage. If you get plus one Lagoon, it's usually Silas that you want to turn into a Lagoon unit. And that's because, number one, he'll double cast. Number two, he gets the extra attack speed. Number three, he gets the extra ability power from running Lagoon. And it just makes it much easier to hit six Lagoon. What, In the context of this game, what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to play the Jacks for frontline. Otherwise, I would probably have to take out the Jacks in order to play Malphite, because I would need Malphite to get to six Lagoon. But because now that Silas is a Lagoon, the minute that I put Soma into my team composition... I'm going to be at 6 Lagoon, so I will be able to continue playing Jax and not have to drop him for Malphite, which is awesome, because Jax is a much better frontliner. 
All right, now for last augment here, cybernetics implants is tempting. It's I actually kind of like doubling up on cybernetics because doubling up on cybernetics means you get the extra health and you already want to spread out your items. So I did think about that, but ultimately I decided, you know what, I have not really itemized healing into my comp. Let's just go ahead and take Thrill of the Hunt. So that way my units will be proccing the healing on kill as well. Now, Thrill of the Hunt is a win more augment. I've said this many times. If you are already winning fights, you win even harder. If you are losing fights, it does nothing, which is why I generally don't think it's one of the better augments. But right now, I actually think I'm in a win more position. That is, I believe that I'm snowballing ahead of the rest of the lobby. And I feel like this is a situation in normal League of Legends where like you are way ahead and like you're pounding the other team. So you buy the Magi Soul Stealer to keep stacking your win that much further. So like I said, this is not kind of normally how I would play things, but I believe that I'm already ahead, and because I, I'm already in a win more position, that uh, the Thrill of the Hunt is actually good in this situation, because it means that my units, which are already going to be killing the enemy units, will now be healing, and just making the fights even that more hopeless for the enemy team. So it's a little bit of a risky thing to pick up, but uh, I actually think it does fit pretty well with what I'm running right here. This was one of the closer fights I had seen recently, but like, look, I'm level 7, uh, 50 gold, halfway to level 8. This person's level 7, 0 gold. So this person's basically dead man walking. And uh, I am just accelerating past them at, like, record-breaking speed. I'm pushing past these people. All right, one other thing I want to mention. So I had a leftover rod at the end of the last minion round. And then when I hit 140 lagoon stacks, I got another item. And it was another rod. So I ended up with double rods. And my thinking was, okay, that could be Soam's last item, potentially. I could always have it be blue buff plus Morello's plus, de plus Death Cap, which would be a very nice setup for some. Um, but I don't want those rods to just sit on my bench doing nothing. So I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to get an item remover at 220 Lagoon Stacks. You're guaranteed to get an item remover. So why don't I put this item on Zyra for right now? It's going to give her cybernetic uplink value, so she'll cast faster. She also has a Voker trait in, thanks to um, Seraphine being on my board. And she will make very, very good use of this Death Cap. Plus, um, I might just want to keep it on her long term, but even if I don't, I will get an item remover, so it does not have to be permanent. So yeah, now Zyra, I'm turning into like secondary carry in this fight. So particularly when I put a mage emblem on her, remember, she's going to get the mage out eventually when I find Soam. And I'm actually going to look for Soam here. I'm, I'm going to be level 8, 50 gold in the bank after this carousel. I'm just going to roll until I can find Soam 1 star, and then I probably should be strong enough to go to 9. But yeah, the Zyra is going to have... She's going to have a Death Cap plus Mage Hat, which turns her into a pretty strong unit in her own right. Not just someone who applies Whisper Stacks, but is strong in her own right. Anyway, so there's some good options here on this carousel. There is the tier. I would love to get the tier. That means I don't have to force a tier from Treasure Dragon. There's also a Zoe. I would have taken the Zoe as well, just so I could play Zoe in my Mage Board. And now I'm like, I want to make it look like I want one of these other items, and then... Uh, cut right at the last second for the tier, because that other person, this person, Aram, Dgen, that's the Grandmaster player. They definitely look like someone who would take the item just to deny it to me. So I kind of faked going for one of the items and then cut right at the last second to pick up the tier. All right, so now it's time to roll. We're just looking for Soam here. Really just want to roll until I can find Soams. I'm hoping I'll find this relatively quickly. And oh, well, we only had to roll about 10 gold. So again, this is a big, big high roll game. So we'll put the blue buff plus Morellos on Soam. And we put the de the mage cap on Zyra, and now I'm content to go to level 9. Like, normally you'd have to roll more here, but I think that my board is just so absurdly strong that I can just push right to level 9 immediately. So I've got the 6 Lagoon in. Uh, Lagoon provides attack speed and ability power to Lagoon units. Now, normally I would need another Lagoon unit, but again, I'm getting plus 1 from Silas. As I mentioned before, this allows me to not have to run the crummy Malphite unit. I can run the much better Jax unit. Six mages. So I've actually added kind of a, an even number of mages, which does not do all anything in particular for me. So in theory, I could actually take out one of my mages and play another unit. Like if I could find... Mm, if I could find like a bard, maybe I could take out Vlad and play bard for the time being. But uh, the, here, the clear play here is push to level nine, find Zoe, and run seven mages. Because that's another humongous spike in terms of damage. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to look to go 9 and play Zoe, and then that gets us up to 7 mages. Again, in this patch version, 5 mages is mages double cast at 110 ability power, 7 mages 140% ability power. And, I mean, that's a pretty big spike because not only do you have more mages on the board who are all double casting, they're all double casting at higher value as well. So, yeah, it's kind of like one of those multiplicative effects. All right, now one of these players did have a Zephyr, so I'm going to position some one off the corner because I knew that one of the people I was up against 
had a Zephyr, but I don't think I end up hitting them this round. Oh, I'm going to hit this person who's running a Zaya board. And, like, this board looks pretty good. They have Zaya two-star and, like, a pretty good front line. But, like, look at the Zyra ult. The Zyra ult hits the entire front line, just shreds them to pieces, and then Soam just piles on on top of that and finishes them off. Like I said, this is not a weak comp by any means, but I made it look like a weak comp there. Just like, oh, my God. This board is just an absolute steamroller. And again, this is with Soam one star. Like, Soam is not really... he He's not really anywhere close to being maxed out. He also only has two items, so he can still get a third item on him. So yeah, we just are tearing through these boards with my setup here. And then look what I'm going to get here. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I can use this. Spear of Shojin, okay. That's good on, it's good on Zyra or Seraphine. I think it's better on Zyra in this situation, so we'll put it on her. Go ahead, and then I've also got... A sword and a rod, so I can make Gunblade, which is a good item on Soam. The one weakness of putting this on Soam is it does leave Soam a little bit low as far as actual damage. Like, uh, Soam, when he had, just has Morellos plus uh, Gunblade, there's not that much raw AP on this unit. But then again, I do get AP from the Lagoon trait, and I do get AP from the Mage trait. So, in that respect, I do think it's pretty decent. And then I actually have the Leftover Giant Slayer as well. But there isn't really anyone on this board that benefits that much from Giant Slayer. Like, Vlad is just a support unit, Talia is just a support unit. So, I think of this over, and I was like, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stick one, one component on both of these units, because that way they get the Cybernetics value. So, they will get the extra health. And they're also going to cast faster via cybernetic uplink. So I actually think that's the best thing I can do with those leftover components. Just slap one on each unit for cybernetics value. Now I do have Jack still unitemized. So I'm going to be looking to get another item for him. Alternately, an item for Silas would be nice as well. Something like Ionic Spark would be awesome. Warmogs just for a little bit more health on the front line. Just something to put on these units. So I'm basically looking for frontline items or support items right now. Um, like Zeke's would be nice. Chalice would be amazing if I could get a Chalice and then put it on like Zoe later on down the road. But uh, I'm pretty capped out on items right now. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got. There's the item remover at 220 stacks. So I've got that in case I want to remove items. But I'm actually now I'm pretty happy with these items on Zyra. Honestly, Zyra is kicking butt in these fights. Death Cap, Shojin, plus Evoker's Trait, plus Mage Cap. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> she double casts nonstop. Uh, also, you can see the damage on Soam there. I was trying to see his damage goes up by about 30% when he's two-starred. And, of course, it'll go up if I can find seven mages as well. Like, these fights have not even been remotely close. I'm just... Again, I hate to use the same adjective again, but uh, just steamrolling through these fights right now. I actually think this team that I'm set to hit this round is one of the stronger people in the lobby. They're playing six Dragon Mancer, and they're trying to figure out who to put the Dragon Mancer emblem on. I think that they're putting it on their Nunu. And uh, they're pretty close to, I think, uh, Lee Sin 3-star. So I would l definitely like to have this person not scale up in the fights much more. So I was trying to position a little bit to hit this person. I think in the end they put the Dragon Mancer emblem on Nunu. Yeah, Nunu is the Dragon Mancer here. But look at the front line. Look at how they're all going to get hit by Zyra. There's like four units trapped in one line. Yeah, so they're all just going to get shredded to pieces by Zyra. And then Soam piles on the extra damage. Remember, we're healing on every kill. Plus we have the Gunblade on Soam, so he's healing the team. This is going to be a little bit closer, but Nunu can only kill people so quickly. Remember, Nunu can only kill one unit at a time, does not have a Quicksilver Sash. We have the Morellos on him so that he's not healing for that much off his Gunblade Hand of Justice. And Dragon Mancer Nunu, you might have been a terror in a previous patch, but you actually weren't that strong in this patch. So yeah, maybe that person just was unaware that that had been nerfed uh, and nerfed pretty heavily from the Dragon Mancer Nunu patch. Now, I get a full item at 250 components. I get Edge of Night. I don't really want Edge of Night, so I'm going to re-roll. I was like, oh, okay. Morellos. Well, that's not bad. I'll just go ahead and put it on Seraphine, because that way everyone who uh, gets hit by her shielding ability, their auto attacks apply the Morellos burn. Now, do I really need this? Well, no, not. I don't really need this, because Soma already has a Morello, and Soma applies Morellos to an amazing extent. But, I mean, uh, Seraphine's definitely the best unit to take advantage of this. I'm going to scoot my units over to the left because one of the people I could play had a three-star Diana who was positioned to jump to the right-hand side. Turns out I don't end up hitting that board, but better safe than sorry. This is one... By the way, did you see the second cast from the Zyra just absolutely shred the back line there? The um, Zaya on the enemy team got tied up with that for a couple seconds and boom! She just disappears. And yep, I guess who did the most damage in that fight because it wasn't Soam, it was Mage Zyra. Yep, that's why she's getting nerfed. As I said, uh, by the time you watch this video, the uh, Zyra and Seraphine are, are scheduled to be heavily nerfed in the upcoming patch. So yeah, they're they're probably they're probably a little overtuned in this patch. 
just a little bit. If you saw, Zyra just deleted the entire back line with a double cast while shredding their MR with Whispers. Anyway, so there's some cool stuff here. There's actually another Mage Hat here. And in retrospect, I wish I had taken the Mage Hat. At the time, I was like, I don't know what I would do with this Mage Hat. Um, but I think in retrospect, I should have taken it. I ended up taking the Thief's Glove, which is not bad. I'm going to put that on Jax, and that's going to get him a Cybernetics item. But uh, what I actually could have done was I could have taken the Mage Hat, and then I could have um, dropped Vlad from my comp and uh, just put and just played like played Bard with a Mage Hat, and that would have been even better. So like I wish I had done that instead. So oh well, yeah. So like here's Bard. I could have taken the Mage Hat and put it on Bard, and then I would have had seven Mages with Bard instead of uh, instead of the Vlad. So. Uh, yeah, should have taken that mage cap. I was just thinking at the time, like, well, I'm never, I can't get to nine mages. Um, I was just thinking at the time, I don't have, I, there's no way to get to nine mages, so the mage cap doesn't really do anything for me. But then I forgot that Vlad was basically useless in this team. Like, Talia is not because she gives me Lagoon trait, but Vlad is very, very useless on this board. So, could have replaced uh, one cost Vlad with five cost uh, Bard and had Bard double casting, tying people up. So, Ah, well, as I said, not terrible. Jax does need a frontline item. It actually does make him quite a bit tankier to get the uh, Thief's Glove and also get Cybernetics value on the Thief Glove. But what could have been, what could have been? <laughs> I could have had Barge with Mage Cap as well. Could have had triple Mage Caps in this game. Ah, should have seen that play. Should have should have been thinking, hey, wait a minute, I can turn uh, can turn Bard or Soraka. I could have turned Soraka into a, unit as, into a Mage as well, but Bard's probably better because he would give me Mystic Trait. Ah, well. Now, there is one other play that you could do with this board. There is also the possibility of... Uh, I could drop down to... Um, I could potentially look to play one of the Mage Dragons. I could potentially look to try to play Al Shin in this comp. Because if you look at the items that are on Zyra right now, what does Zyra have? She has Spear of Shojin. She has Death Cap. She has Mage Hat. Those would be pretty good items on, say, Al Shin, right? So there is a play in this game as well. I could have looked to pick up Al Shin... And then drop, basically what I would do is I would drop the um, Zyra and I would drop the Seraphine, just bot, drop both of the Evokers. And then um, I would play seven mages with seven mage Al Shin. So that also would be an incredibly strong way to cap out this board. But I would probably want to get two star Al Shin in order to do that. Uh, I actually was not looking for that play in this game, but I should have been looking for that. Anyway, I was up against the person who had three-star Diana. So what do we do when we're up against the three-star Assassin? We clump in the corner, box everything in the corner, and that means Diana has no chance of ever getting on top of Soam or on top of Zyra. So yeah, she is not able to do anything. So um, positioning for the win. There's just no way Diana can ever get on top of my carries with that positioning. I do get another component. It's a chain vest. So I'm like, oh, Edge of Night. Cool. That's fine. That's actually not a bad item on Zoe because it does allow her to drop aggression. So if she would get focused in the fight, then uh, whoever was hitting her would go off and hit someone else for a bit. And that's great because we want Zoe to cycle through to more casts overall. Finally, we're also going to get a Trap Claw here. And I actually have one unit that is not using any items. And who is that unit? Oh, it's Vlad. So Vlad, I item removed that sword off of you earlier. Now I'm going to go ahead and look to put this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look to put this Trap Claw on you. So like there's Al Shin. I should be picking up Al Shins because there was the potential for that play. I finally had two-star Seraphine. I actually did not have Seraphines. There's another Al Shin as well. I'm also grabbing these... Um, uh, Silas is because maybe I can hit Silas three star. Mostly right now I'm just rolling for. Uh, there's another bard. I could have had the bard two star. Mostly just rolling for the last Zoe, and I do manage to find that. So I've actually two starred my entire board. Um, as I said, I could have had two star bard. Could have had two star mage bard. So yeah, I'll stop harping on that point. Probably heard me say that enough times. But uh, yeah, so this is pretty much my board now, and it's it's pretty freaking capped out at this point in time. Um, I've got the seven mages in, seven mage, six lagoon, everything's two starred. Look at that Zoe bubble. So Shivana jumps into the back lines and like starts trying to breathe fire on my team, but that's why I've got Zoe. Zoe's just gonna put the invulnerability bubble on my team and everybody's safe. There's a weird visual bug going on in the other match. For some reason, uh, the Grandmaster player, Aram Dgen, had it, like couldn't see a darn thing on his screen. Apparently he was hitting the uh, what is it? Hitting one of the other players? I'm not sure the other player that I didn't hit. Um, but it looks like they were able to win their round anyway. So now it's just me and against this other player. By the way, I am on a 15 round win streak. So yeah, I don't don't really think I'm going to lose. This person's board is perfectly fine. They're playing into Mirage, which is what again I was going to do originally. But uh, I, I think I'm a lot stronger than them. They are level nine, but I mean they don't have. They would need like a two-star Yasuo at the bare minimum to do anything against my board, and they don't have that. And we've just seen how incredibly strong 
the Spurs, do they even have, they have one star Yasuo and one star, yeah, they have one star Yasuo, one star Hecarim. That is, that is not going to be good enough, I'm afraid. So yeah, we're going to get the uh, Zyrocast again, shredding the front line. Boy, that front line died awful fast in this fight. And Zyra then just deletes the back lines with her last cast. And so GG. Uh, yeah, it that this was an absolutely crushing game. It was not even remotely close. I won 16 rounds in a row once I put my mage board together. So yeah, it turns out if you get plus two mages and plus one lagoon, and you keep hitting all your units throughout the game, turns out it's pretty powerful, especially in this patch, which was a mage-centric patch. So this was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed watching. Anyway, thanks again, folks. Hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, hope you're having a good week. Take care, folks.